Goodness, did you see Apostle uh, Egg Yolk over here doing this or Prophet uh, Cornbread over there doing that? We love to run to those kinds of things. That's not new. But in this version of the Hebraic Roots Bible, he says uh, to the Apostle, he explains to him, he said, why are you so amazed? Why are you amazed at this miracle as if we did uh, this out of our own strength? And so they spoke of who Yeshua was and what they did uh, 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 was uh, the instructions of the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. It is Yahuwah who was that prophet. He said, and you must do what he tells you to do. And so uh, in the 13th verse, it says the Elohim of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the Elohim of our fathers, glorified his child, Yahushua, whom you delivered up and denied him before the face of Pilate, that one having decided to set him free. But you deny the holy and just one and ask for a man, a murderer, to be granted to you. <laughs> and the author of life you killed, whom Elohim raised up from the dead, of which we are witnesses. See, they were saying they are witnesses, eyewitnesses to what he did. And verse 16, and in the faith of his name, this man that you see and know, he has strengthened and healed. And the faith that is in him has given him this wholeness before all of you. And now, brothers, and I'm going to say sisters too, I know that you acted in your ignorance, as also did your leaders. But what things Elohim before proclaimed through the mouth of all his prophets that the Messiah should suffer, he fulfilled in this manner. That's the key when he says, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. What was that fulfillment? The law of the priesthood, who you gave sacrifices, who took the blood from the uh, bulls and lambs that were perfect, no spots in them, and put it on their ear, on their toe, and on the utensils. So he's saying, I came and fulfill that, that you no longer need a priest to confess your uh, sin. You don't need to bring a lamb and a bull to the altar and sacrifice it and the blood pour it out. No, now I am that lamb. I am the Paschal lamb. I am uh, Elohim's son. I am the Messiah. And so they say he fulfilled it in this manner. Verse 19 says, repent therefore and be turned so that your sins may be blotted out and times of rest, and some of your Bibles say refreshing, we're reading from the Hebraic roots, come to you from before the presence of your way, and that he may send forth the one before proclaimed to you, Yeshua, the Messiah, whom heaven truly needs to receive until he, the fullness of the times of all things. So in other words, he fulfilled the prophetic word here on earth with the priesthood. Now he has been taken up and he's residing on the right hand of the father and waiting to the fullness of the times of all things of which the Lord spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of all, of old, I'm sorry. OLD of old. So we have to understand if we read this and understand it out of a westernized culture into a Hebraic culture, that these is these Israeli 
slash Jewish apostles and workmen were carrying out the will of Elohim. The, this is Kehillah. This is the congregation of the Most High. This are, these are the people who were ordained by the Ruach to take this word given them by Mishiach and take it to Jerusalem uh, in Samaria and other most parts of the world. Verse 20. And that he may send forth the one before proclaimed to you, Yeshua Messiah, whom heaven truly needs to receive until the fullness of the times of all things of which Elohim spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old. So we repeated that so you can really understand what this is. This is the book of Acts. This is the model that Kehillah, those of us that are in the congregation of Messiah should follow. And then he says that, 22, for Moses indeed said to the fathers, Yahweh, your Elohim, will raise up to you a prophet from among your brothers, one like unto me. You shall hear him according to all things, whatever he may speak to you. And it shall be that of every soul, whoever should not hear that prophet shall perish from among the people. And if you want to, you can find that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, verses six, uh, 15 to 16. Also, uh, uh, I think verse 19 as well. Verse 24, and also all the prophets from Samuel and those following after as many as spoke also before announced these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which Elohim appointed to our fathers saying to Abraham, even in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, that prophecy is so true. We have not followed Elohim as we should. We have not followed Mishiach as we should but we have always been a blessing. You let someone move in our neighborhood other than us and put up a business, it will flourish. You let them uh, uh, discover something and maybe even some of us did it and didn't get credit for it. Uh, look at the phone business, look at the uh, cell phone business. Uh, our people are the ones who really keep that industry up. If we do, I got a text from someone and they were saying something about July 17th and they call it a black, black day, blackout, a blackout. That's what it's called. I think they said. And they said if every black person in America would not buy one thing for that 24 hour period, where would the economy be? I don't know if people are going to do it, but that is certainly an excellent suggestion because we are the Hebrews, we are the blessing, but we are not the head, we're the tail because we reject the Messiah's um, way of doing things. We reject the truth of the Torah. We declare that the law is dead. We have taken on the ways of the Gentile. We call ourselves Gentiles. We will not realize who we are and we will crucify anybody that comes up and say and call them a liar or they don't know what they're talking about. Ah, oh, here's a racist mess because we don't believe it because we have been so uh, um, uh, conditioned uh, and in psychology, it talks about how I think it was Pavlov, you know, you, you give the rat, I think it was something, uh, some kind of something I forgot now because it's been so many years since I took it. But you give that rat, for instance, uh, a type of drug or something. And, and that rat likes it. And um, if you didn't give that rat that drug, you know, there was a problem. But as long as you give that rat that drug, you know, people, as long as you give people what they like, they will follow, they will do. But you stop doing it and people will no longer follow you. 
because they wouldn't follow Christ. They wouldn't follow the disciples. They fought them. And you'll find this out in the coming weeks as we talk about Acts. And so uh, he said, even in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We are a blessing to the United States. We are a blessing financially. We're not on Wall Street, <laughs> but Wall Street is there because of us. When we had Black Wall Street, the jealousy was so among the Gentile people, they destroyed it. And we have never, ever recovered from it. Verse 26, he says, um, having raised up this, his child, Yeshua, talking about uh, the Most High, Elohim sent him first to you, blessing you if you turn back and repent from your iniquities. That's what the problem. We are marching and we are protesting against racism. It is never going to stop. You can protest till your tongue fall out. It's not going to stop until the Hebrew people, the nation, the real nation of Israel, repents of her sin and come back to the true and living God, come out of these man-made religions and all these different idol idolatrous religions that we are hooked up with, when we come with the same mind, praying the same prayer, praying to this one true God, that's when a change will come. And probably somebody's going, I know you probably get very upset. I'm going to say it because I said it to the congregation of Bethel. I was in my, I don't know if I was in the kitchen or where I was somewhere. And the Ruach slapped me upside my face, asked me a question. He said, where in the, my early, uh, you know, in my early church among the believers, did you see them protest because of mistreatment? That thing really rocked me because, honey, listen, I was down there in Selma. I was on the bus. I saw uh, a Black people being hung from a tree. The bus we were on, the Ku Klux Klan was running. It scared me. I'm I've never been so scared in all my life at that time because I was only like 17. And the Ku Klux Klan was running alongside the bus, shaking their fists at us. I was a burn, baby burn. I believed in that. So when the Ruach brought that to me, that thing tore me apart because the Ruach is right. This is not, the protesting is not going to do a thing. The, they might say, they might appear to be making some progress, but you better trust me. They're figuring out how they can get around putting anybody in jail they're not going to execute anybody that kills us. Because deep down inside, these people hate us. And it is not going to take marching, but it's going to take prayer. One thing I love that Newark is doing is that every night, Reverend Louise Roundtree, who is the um, director from the Mayor Roz Baraka's office over clergy affairs. And every night at 9.30, there's prayer. Every Tuesday, there is prayer from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. with fasting. That's why that we did not have the killing and the looting in Newark as they had in other places. Of course, we also have a mayor that let them know we are not going to tolerate that foolishness. And he have a group of two or 300 people, particularly young men who were out in the midst of those thousands of people who had their eyes open, kind of like the men of Issachar who knew the times. And they spotted somebody, oh no, bro, you ain't going to do that here. Keep it moving or you're going to pay the consequences. That's why Newark did not have 
the violence because every denomination has been called into prayer that will come. Whether you are Episcopal, Presbyterian, Catholic, Jewish, uh, Muslim, uh, I'm trying to think, non-denominational, whoever, Reverend Roundtree has reached out and every night there has been prayer. Every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. prayer with fasting. And in addition to that, certain churches have been praying. I know our church, our intercessors were having prayer. I know other churches, they were having prayer in addition to this. So it takes that to bring us together. Now, if we all could serve the same God, the same Yah, if we would take this same uh, model and do the laws of Yahweh, of Yahuwah, of Yahovah, my, 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 what a change it would be. So Acts shows us, it's the model that shows the congregation of Yahuwah what the appropriate actions are, what we should do, how we should do it, and who are we serving. Verse 26, I'm going to repeat again. It says, having raised up this child, uh, uh, Yahusha, Yah Yahusha, Elohim sent him first to you, blessing you if you turn back and repent from your iniquities. Hallelujah. And so then it says, as we go on and read, that, and as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the sanctuary leaders and the Sadducees stood near them. This is chapter four, I'm sorry, verse one. While they were being furious at them because they taught the people concerning the resurrection by the Messiah, that is from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them into custody until the morrow. For it was already evening, verse four, this is chapter four. But many of those hearing the word believed. You see what I'm saying? Somebody's going to believe if you put it out there. And the number of the men came to about 5,000. When is the last time we saw 5,000 of our people accept the Lord, not according to the world's model, but according to Acts, the model of Acts. Verse five, and it happened on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and scribes assembled into Jerusalem. Also, Anus, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the high priestly family line. Now, if you remember this dude, I, the young people say that, Anus or Annas, the high priest, he's the one that caused Christ to be crucified because he didn't like how the Christ whipped their backsides out of that temple and his uh, relative come crying to him, look what he's doing. I can't make any money because he told them they can't be in the temple selling. And he began to orchestrate. It was not the Romans, it was not uh, Caesar that orchestrated the crucifixion of Messiah. It was the people in the congregation. It was the people of the covenant. It was the Hebrew people. It was the Israeli people. It was the Jews. They did not put him on that cross, but they got him up there by telling the Romans, oh, is this, he said he's your king. We have no king but Caesar. So they orchestrated it. So here they find the same group is coming together because they don't want these men preaching Christ because people were believing. Verse seven says, and standing them in the midst, they were inquiring by what sort of power or by what sort of name did you do this? Then being filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter said to them, 
rulers of the people and elders of Israel, listen, if we are being examined today on the good work of this sick man that has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that the name of Yahshua, Messiah, the Nazarene, whom ye, see, <laughs> crucified, he put it right back in the corner, whom Elohim raised from the dead, in this name, this one stands before you hold. This one is the stone rejected by you, the builders, the one who has come to be into the head of the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no other name. No other man, no other person. I'm adding that. For neither is there any other name under heaven having been given among men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. So I'd like to tell you the, the power of preaching came through the preaching of salvation through Yahshua and not church doctrine. It was not church doctrine. It was not Greek mythology, but it was through the Israeli Hebrew Jewish people that the Mashiach used to take this word. And I again, Rehearse chapter five and verse 42 in the King James Version. They were and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. That's the King James Version. So I want to uh, say to you that if you really want to know how the church should operate, then go into the book of Acts. It's the model for Kohila, for the congregation. And we have gotten so far away from it. We, we feel that um, salvation is an individual thing and we shouldn't intrude on anybody's rights. And sometimes we're afraid because we don't wanna be rejected. Do you think that those men wanted to be uh, crucified? No. And we know that Peter did not, he wasn't filled, filled with the Ruach. That's why he uh, uh, punked out, man. Oh, no, I don't know him because he hadn't been filled with the spirit. See, when we are afraid and we, we don't, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or we're afraid that we're going to be rejected it's because the Ruach is not in control. When he is in control, you will not give a Rip Van Winkle about a tinkle of what anybody says. As long as the Ruach is leading you and we should always have an answer ready to anyone that asks of us. And then we're going to talk about next week how they had all things in common. And the reason why they could do that and, and go from house to house and town to town is no man claimed anything for himself. They sold their possessions and laid them at the apostles' feet. Not the deacon board, not the steward board, but at the apostles' feet. And because they were honest men, they were told, look out among you. When they were complaining about the Hellenistic widows, they, they weren't getting uh, their daily, uh, uh, um, I guess, part of uh, whatever they needed to get to eat. The apostles say, listen, we don't have time to wait tables. Look out among you. Choose for yourselves seven men full of the Holy Ghost, King James Version, and wisdom. In other words, don't get a knucklehead. Don't get a dummy. Don't get somebody that don't know what to do, but that has wisdom. And let them handle this because we have to take the word of the Lord. And they did that because the people that had plenty money, they sold their possessions. And every man looked out for the other man. 
when they went from house to house breaking bread. If we were to do that, so we'll talk about that. I don't want to get into that this week, but we'll talk about that. The Lord is with us next week. We thank you for listening to us. We thank you uh, for tuning in. I pray that you will share these messages. Uh, everyone, I know Bethel will share them. And those of you uh, that uh, are, are uh, uh, extended family, uh, share these messages and let people read for themselves. When you are discouraged from reading scripture, it's because somebody don't want you to know something. Somebody don't want you to know. Go beyond the Greek. Find out what the Hebraic words tell us. Look up things in Hebrew. It will give you a totally different aspect of what is going on. And so now we're going to do as we always do. We're going to uh, bring the uh, word of the Most High uh, through prayer, hallelujah. Bring salvation through what the Mishiach died for, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We bless your name today. Again, you are our Elohim. You are the Lord of all lords. You are the God of all gods. Besides you, there is no. Some claim, hallelujah, to be a God, but you showed us in Egypt that you are the God of nature. You are the God of flesh and blood. You are the God of the earth, hallelujah, and there is none beside you. No other God was named in that but you, hallelujah. Out of those 3,000 gods, nobody, nobody, hallelujah, could do what you did, hallelujah. And so you are the one that we reach out for today. Lord, somebody out there does not understand this. Somebody out there is looking at the letters and saying who shouldn't do this and who should do this. Somebody is not really paying attention to your gospel because they haven't studied it. But we pray that this message infiltrates somebody, that they will rise up in the knowledge that you have given us. And they would realize that the covenant, the blood covenant, of our ancestors has been broken. They said, y'all will do, and they didn't do it. They broke the covenant that you gave to Moses to give to your people that we might take it to the world. And so we renew that covenant again this week. And those that are with me today that renew that covenant and say, Lord, Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of our iniquities. Help us to walk in your way and your will, not according to our understanding, but according to your word. Rise up in us, Ruach, hallelujah. Rise up in the deadness in us. Quicken us and make us alive in you that we may read your word and understand. And so as we give ourselves again to you, as we renew this blood covenant and say, y'all, we will do it. We'll keep it. As you forgive us our sins and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. And as your words say, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my faith, and turn from their wicked ways. You said you would hear from heaven, and that you would forgive our sins, and you will heal our land. We pray for our elected officials, our mayor, our governor, our president. We pray you would give them the knowledge of how to lead the people in righteousness. We pray for those on the front line who are still working with COVID-19 patients. 
We pray that they will be protected under your Psalm 91. We pray that people will be able to get food and eat and attribute that to your mercy and your grace. Use this president to be a blessing to your people. Use these governors to be a blessing to your people. Use these mayors to be a blessing to your people and let your people be a blessing to them. We thank you, Lord, our Elohim. Yahovah, ha, King of King and Lord of Lords, through your son, Yahusha, Yeshua, the Mashiach, we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening, and we say to you, Shalom. Mm -hmm.